Hey, what's up, True Experience Nation? I'm Richie, here to help you learn how to experience the absolute most out of life. If you're new around here, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm very grateful for that. I want to start out by wishing everybody a very happy and a very blessed new year. It's 2010. It's 2020, time to push forward, time to get rolling. New goals, new beginnings, fresh slate. Y'all know what it is. It's time to get this ball rolling. One quick piece of advice. If you're tuning in on Wednesday, day one, start taking action today, whatever it is. You got goals out there. You, you have things you're starting that you want to do. Get started today. Don't worry about the details. You work the details out when you're in motion. That's important. That's the only real way to see real progress is to get moving and you make the changes along the way. That's what makes the journey fun. That's how you start to measure success is by your progress. All right, guys, if you are brand new, you know what I like to do is I like to uh, share with you the things that I've been doing to experience the most out of life. I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of podcasts, different experiences, whether it comes from relationships or being a father or running a home-based business or exercising and all these different kinds of things. And I bring these tips to you that I'm applying or using for myself. So guys, what we're going to do is continue on in the book, 30 Days to a Better You by Tiffany Malat. I got 15 days in and I stopped and I took a hiatus. All right. And we're picking right back up there. So we're going to start on day 16. I already got the other book that I'm going to read on deck. I'm excited to get started. But let's go. All or nothing less than 16. Whatever you're starting today, finish. All or nothing. And I want to put a caveat on that at the end of this video. But man, once you got started, you got to see this thing through. And you need to understand that the beautiful scenery is just up ahead. You got to keep pushing a little bit further. The funny thing is when you start progressing in life, you start experiencing a better version of yourself or better circumstances. Once that mind expands, it can never go back to its original dimension. Man, in order to go back, man, once you got that taste, all right, you've got that experience, that taste of a better life, you can't go back. Going back would be torture once you've been woke. Once you see what's up ahead and what's what's possible for you, man, going back would be a killer. I want you to think about it like in terms of a relationship. Let's say you've been in a, in a bad relationship, you know, abusive, whether verbally or emotionally or whatever the case may be, and the person's just not very good. But that's all you've ever known. Maybe that was what you experienced with your parents and your high school boyfriend, and you just think that's your circumstances, or maybe it's you, or maybe it's the situation that you're in, and that's just normal that everybody's going through that. Well, it's not until you get out of that relationship and find a real one, a good one. You know, they see you, you see them, you in love, they in love, they treat you right, they take you out, you're holding hands in public, you're not really fighting that much, and you're like, holy cow, what is this? Once you get that taste to see what's possible for you, you can't even go back. Could you imagine going back to a bad relationship? It would be absolutely torture, it would be gut-wrenching, because you know deep down inside there's something better for you out there. And if it takes a little bit more work to get that or sacrifices on this end to get that, then you got to make that happen because it's like living in the matrix, man. Once you've been woke up out the matrix and you took the right pill, you woke now like you just can't go back. You can't unsee what you've seen. And so that's kind of the concept of all or nothing. Once you open up that can, baby, you got to go all the way through. I'm going to uh, wrap this up with a story that was in this book. It was um, zip lining in, in mm, I don't know, somewhere in Mexico. Um, I've been on a lot of hikes. I love hiking in the outdoors. I've done zip lines and stuff before. And so I can really relate with this story. They had a guide and they're up in Mexico and they're going through the zip lines. Beautiful scenery, you know, difficult hike. I mean, you're hiking to the top of a mountain. Lots of twists and turns and challenges, even though it's beautiful along the way. A lot of people don't want to do the hard part, the hike to get to the fun part, the zip line. And so they get all the way there, almost all the way there, over halfway, do all this work, all this energy, all this effort, and then give up either because they're tired or because of fear and they turn back around instead of pushing forward. 
Can any of y'all relate to that? Have you ever done that in life with anything before, whether it's exercise or relationships or whatever you have going on that things get difficult, you're not sure, you're not sure if you wanna risk it, and you've done a whole bunch of work, laid the groundwork, and then you don't just stop, you actually turn around and go back. You spend more energy going back than it takes to push forward. So many of y'all have pushed so far and done so much and seen so much progress to give up short of the finish line. And the amount of time it takes to go back requires more time and more effort and energy. You spend more time complaining, crying, whining, and giving up than it would take to push forward. And so make sure that's not you to get to the beautiful scenery. Guys, push forward. Those things are right on the other side. Here's the caveat I wanted to add in here. When I say all or nothing, I ha I've kind of switched my mentality a little bit like, once you're on a path, you become so locked in and stubborn to it, like you just refuse to switch gears. Understand the difference between quitting and switching. Sometimes you might be on a path and the path needs to be tweaked or changed and like, you know what, maybe I don't want to actually do what I said I wanted to do and I don't want to give up, but I want to deviate. I want to take another path. I want to commit to something else or I need to pivot or something's changed that is requiring me to do something different. That's okay. Don't be so locked into something that you, you walk yourself to, you know, death, right? Just a burning fire just because you're committed and you're going to see it through no matter what. Bro, if there's a better way that you figure out, you got to take it. And so when I say all or nothing, I'm talking about stopping and quitting and turning back. That's what we don't want to do. We don't want to start all the way from scratch. If you need to take a moment and pause and plant your flag and say, yo, I got to regather and then continue pushing forward, that's okay, right? Like, I wanna say something, man. Like, so I was on this book, I got 15 days in, and this was like my third or fourth book I had done consistently. So I put in a lot of good consistent videos. I didn't quit. Motherfucker, I stopped, regathered, recentered, refocused to make sure to bring the right energy to these videos, and I'm right back where I started from before. I didn't start over from scratch, I'm picking right back up because I planted my flag and said, boom, I'm right here. That's different from quitting and going back and going back to the drawing board. Some of y'all have made so much progress, I need y'all to keep on pushing. Figure out what that is and keep going and understand it's okay to be open-minded and don't feel like you're a failure if you have to pivot. That's a strength. Understanding and seeing what's ahead and be like, hey, you know what, I'm not vibing with this. My situation's changed, that's not, what I, that's not the direction I wanna go anymore. Let me, let me detour and pivot and, and go another direction, but you keep moving. Never back, always forward. You feel me? Beauty is on the other side, guys. I want y'all to hold firm and keep doing that. And one tip I always say in, in things like this is you have to find joy and progress and pleasure in small wins along the way. If you're hiking to the top of that mountain, and if y'all know what a, um, wow, I just lost it. Um, switch back, apologize. Sometimes going straight up a mountain is too much, too much work. It's too steep, and so they have switchbacks. If you ever notice that, if you go hiking where you kind of go side to side, that's to take the grade off the mountain. Take a little bit more steps, but it's easier in the long run than going straight up, burn, burn yourself out. And so find small victories like, hey, here's the switchback. I need to get up this hill, and I can take a moment to, bre to breathe, look at the scenery, get some water, regain, and keep pushing forward, and look back sometimes and say, wow, Look at the progress I've done. Look at the awesome things I've already accomplished. Everybody can go at their own pace. I might have people run right by me, but I'm gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other and I'm gonna keep moving forward. But the way to do that is to find pleasure and small wins in your journey. Don't wait and hold off, you know, gratefulness or happiness until you finish that thing. Um, another point I would like to make when it comes to all or nothing and being able to switch and pivot, give yourself some real time. For instance, if you're going to start out with a workout program, don't do it for three weeks and decide, man, maybe this ain't for it. I'll, I'll just switch something else. Like, don't constantly switch back and forth. Set a time period and commit for, for an extended number of time with enough to see some type of progress. 90 days, quarterly, 
and, and plan in your calendar to stop like, hey, we're gonna go this route. I think this is something I wanna do. I think this is something I wanna go and I'm committing to this process, this system, this behavior, this deal for this amount of time and then we'll reconvene, we'll sit back and we'll reflect and see if I can improve it, see if I can change it, see if I wanna keep going this way, see if I wanna do something else. Like, does that make sense? Like I'm committed to doing cardio for 90 days. And in the 90 days, you might do treadmill, you might run outside, you might walk, you might do an elliptical, you might do a rowing machine. Go and see and, and give it a, a solid go and make changes like that, but stay on the path of the cardio. Then at the end of the 90 days or whatever your, your set period is, like, okay, here's my progress, this is what I've done. You know what? I need to cut back on my cardio, I'm not feeling it for whatever reason, let me do weight training and let me give that a go. Like mix it up, play around, but stay the path on whatever it is you're doing for an extended period of time. So you have some data. So you actually have something to look at. So you can look back and say, man, look how far I've come in just 90 days. Look at what I've accomplished, now make the decision if you wanna keep on that same path, make more changes or deviate completely to do something else. But be smart about it, be logical, don't have to always be emotional, keep pushing forward. You already know your boy gonna be back again tomorrow. In fact, I'm probably gonna go ahead and pre-record several of these videos so that they load it up for the rest of this week. Guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I hope y'all have a wonderful new year. And um, hey, until tomorrow, I'm out.